Oh, hi everyone. So, I guess I just kind of left you stranded halfway going through Fiji. So, my parents are on the way from New Zealand to Fiji and uh, I'm, of course, still reading my mum's diary. So, yeah, I'm just gonna keep on reading where I um, left last time. So, we're on the 11th of June, 1996. In the morning, the wind is going back to sleep. And to stop the boat from rolling so badly, we start the engine. On the horizon behind us, a white sail appears. And while making contacts on the VHF radio, we found out it's the Tara, the yacht that left at the same day as us from the Bay of Islands. The Tara had made a pit stop of two days in the Minerva Reef and caught up with us soon afterwards. But only because they have been using the engine all the time. The ocean is like a huge mirror again, and by noon the Tara was motoring alongside us on this huge ocean of blue. It was a good opportunity to make nice pictures of each other's boats and have some chats over the VHF radio. Especially Teresa really enjoyed the conversations. After all, she's used to asking people questions all the time with her job as a journalist. Tara finally overtook us by engine while we still tried to bravely keep trimming our flapping sails with a little wind there still was. Just behind us, maybe about 10 meters, a big whale surfaced, looking at us with interest. But we seemed to be too slow company and Tara's smelly diesel fumes caused him to turn around and make way somewhere else. For three days now we have been trying to catch fish. But every time we take the line, only the tail of her silverfish is gone. So tonight we're eating spaghetti, with tuna, out of a can, that is. That evening and night, we kept following the top light of the Tara, and we stayed in contact via via Jeff. Tara has a weather fax on board, so that's really luxurious. 12th of June. Only 250 nautical miles to go to Suva. So maybe only two more days. Around 5 a.m. the wind went back on holiday and we started the engine again. Around 10 a.m. the poor engine got overheated and Ron had to repair it. So here he is, hauling off all of Teresa's luggage again to get to his tools, meanwhile giving me an irritated look. By now we're all pretty fed up with Teresa, mostly because she's feeling a bit too much at home on the boat, commenting on everything and telling us how to do things. She gets annoyed straight away when Laura cries, which isn't often, and then she tells us how we should and shouldn't handle her. But now Ron is so stressed that he turns on the engine straight away when the wind dies, just so we can get to Suva quicker. The atmosphere between us and Teresa is tense. There's no better way to get to know somebody than being on a boat together for a while. Around 1pm, a fresh southwest wind comes up, and we are able to sail again. The wind is building very quickly and so are the waves. Two hours later, the rain is falling with buckets from the sky and the waves are kicking us around. Because of the heavy wind gusts that came with a lightning storm, we had a hard time getting the mainsail down. I'm holding the tiller while Ron is climbing onto the foredeck in streaming rain. Laura is being thrown all around her bed in the bow of the boat, but she just keeps sleeping. Amazing. Teresa is standing inside, holding herself frightfully while yelling, Hey, everything is flying around my ears. At least we're making good progress now. I find the strong wind gusts scary, but Ron is enjoying the rough sailing as he calls it. Well, everybody has their own thing. 13th of June. The biggest joke is that the next morning we are sailing on a completely flat ocean again. But now we are soaking wet and very tired. That was a rough night. But the boat has been desalted properly and we are only about 10 miles from Suva. We're already behind the island and inside of the reef, so it's nice and calm now. At 11 a.m. Laura gets angry and is yelling for somebody to finally give her some milk. Out in the cockpit, she shares our enthusiasm to see the land. We drop our anchor in front of the yacht club of Suva. Teresa and I start cleaning the boat and hanging up all of the soaked clothing. In and outside, it's blazing hot. Laura isn't happy with this new state of hot and calmness. 
She's yelling continuously and Ron has been gone already for four hours to clear us in. He comes back with a wail of a Fijian who got the order to inspect our boat. But once the poor fat guy saw where I had to climb on board, he quickly nodded and said everything was looking just fine. And so Ron and the customs official drove back to the shore and we put on a pants and a shirt for nothing. Finally, Laura falls asleep. After 11 days at sea, I am also so tired that I don't even want to go on land anymore. All four of us are in for a nice long sleep, but we're not used to the heat yet. 27 degrees. Whew. 14th of June. Ron eagerly packs all of Teresa's things into the dinghy to set her off ashore. He can't wait to finally have a ship and his family just for himself again. We say goodbye to Teresa and the Yacht Club and stayed a little longer to wash the three buckets of washing we have. The privilege of having a washing machine is over, so we do everything by hand. The Yacht Club does have a washing machine, but it looks like it's from before the war. And it sounds as if a plane is taking off when it starts washing. You need to fill the water in by hand, and all of this even costs three Fijian dollars. When we are done washing, we put Laura on top of her car and head into the city. After about 20 minutes walking, we had passed a prison where there was still ripped up pants hanging on the gate's bob wire, and now walking into a very crowded city. There are so many cars and buses racing past, we are almost being suffocated and feel like we're poisoned from the fumes. After the weeks of good fresh sea air, this comes as a shock again. The city is crowded with people from India who've taken over the business scene here, and there seems to be Chinese food everywhere. But it's cheap. For only three Fijian dollars, you can eat well and get a decent meal. Eating out is definitely cheaper than buying food in the supermarket, and cooking ourselves. A very welcome solution for me. But nevertheless, we do come back to the area with loads of fresh food, and sit down to let the first impressions of Sufra sink in. So they made it safely to Fiji, although they did have a bit of rough weather on the way. Um, I know from the diary, of course, but also from the stories my parents told me. Um, apparently, I didn't care a bit, and uh, well, I don't remember anything from it, of course. So, um, but we got through it. Well, I uh, do hope you enjoyed listening, and uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.